Okay, so for today's video, I just want to give you guys a little bit of a warning. This video contains some war footage, the kind of thing you'd see in the daily news. If you're not comfortable with that, you probably want to turn off now. For those of you who are a little bit older with a stronger constitution, enjoy the video. Today, I'm going to start by asking you guys a question. So if I said, where in the world today are most of the advancements in robotics and drones taking place? You might say, Tokyo, Japan, Silicon Valley, USA, Tel Aviv, Israel. What if I said to you, Mosul and Iraq? So just like in World War II, the war in Iraq and Syria has shown that challenge, adversity, and the raw need to survive are huge drivers of technological innovation. So this all started about two or three years ago when Chinese quadcopter prices came down and reliability went up. They started to flood the market. And those factions with ingenuity in Iraq and Syria at the time largely left to slug it out by the West they realized they could use these quadcopters to scout out the battlefield and locate the enemy with precision. So if you can for a minute, imagine you're a drone pilot in Syria. You locate the enemy, and you start hovering over them. The enemy who hear the whirring of the quadcopter start to look up, point their guns, and start shooting. So to the drone operator, this already feels like a computer game. He's remotely controlling the drone using his phone or his tablet. And what would be more natural in a computer game than to drop a bomb on your enemy and say goodnight. So just how difficult is it to weaponize a commercial drone? Today, we're going to find out exactly. So just how vulnerable would London be to a similar drone attack? Alright, so just how difficult and technically challenging would it be to commit a clandestine drone strike here in London, our nation's capital? Well, the best way I find to figure these things out is by doing. So today, we're going to take a commercial drone, we're going to attempt to weaponize it using standard off-the-shelf components from eBay and Amazon, and then we're going to take that drone out into the streets of central London and see if my aim is good enough to hit it. This thing is a DJI Phantom, one of the most popular drones available today. 
and it's widely being used in Iraq and Syria. So how would we go about weaponizing this drone? Well first off, we're obviously going to need a dropping mechanism. And that dropping mechanism is going to sit back here and make sure we can still freely roll the camera so we can look around and take aim at our intended target. So what would that dropping mechanism look like? Okay, so this thing, this is our makeshift drone drop unit. The main section in the middle is just a 3D printed piece designed to fit onto our drone. Over here we've got a standard lithium battery and in the middle here we've got a control section. We turn it over, we've got a micro servo with a pin. Now right here is where we're going to place our payload. And when we press the button on the other side, the pin gets released and so does our prospective payload. So now we have a simple module that will attach to our drone and a circuit that will open and close when we press the button. However, how are we going to operate this circuit when our drone can be up to two kilometers away and we obviously can't press the button? Well, we could have a separate radio controller and receiver, but it's a little bit complicated. Maybe there's a more elegant solution. So for inspiration, let's turn to those who have mastered it already, those in Iraq. Here's some pictures that I got from the national news. Now, if you study these pictures coming out of Iraq and Syria, especially the Phantom drones, you'll notice that the lights on the arms are always taped up, and sometimes there's a wire coming out. What could be going on here? So if we go into Menu and then Advanced Settings, we can see there's a toggle which we can use to turn the drone's LED lights on the arms on and off. So this thing is an LDR, a light dependent resistor. So if we place this thing over the light on the arm of our drone, we can use the menu option that I showed you previously as the trigger to drop our payload. So this thing is our weaponized drone. We've got the dropper over here, we've got the light dependent resistor over here attached to the arm. So, before we go crazy with this thing, I think we need to take it out for a low altitude technical test with a safe payload. At this point, I'm not even sure if this contraption is going to work at all. Let's head into town and find out. Back up at Mile End, we're going to give this drone mechanism a shot, but first, I need a cup of coffee. So I think I found a great spot out here. We're gonna set up the drone, set up the equipment, and then we're gonna give it a shot at dropping a tennis ball.
hey, moment of truth, will this mechanism actually work? Okay, so the tennis ball test was successful. Unfortunately, we're down on battery, so I gotta head home before we do our final test. Okay, so a special prize goes to anyone observant enough to notice the drone's arm was wrapped in the cloth. Basically, the first time I went out there, it didn't work. I pressed the button, nothing happened. Turns out, too much light was seeping into the LDR. So I grabbed the cloth from my bag, wrapped it around the drone's arm, made sure it was tight, and then it worked great, just like you saw. Okay, so this time we're gonna head over something that looks a little bit more like live ammunition and see if my drone bombing skills are up to scratch. Sure, it's gonna be easy. Okay, so we're back out here with the drone. We've got some new ammunition. Now this might not be explosives, but it's definitely gonna explode. So let's go ahead, see if we can hit the target and maybe ruin someone's day. This looks like the perfect place for an ambush. Now we're just gonna wait for some poor sucker to walk right into our crosshair. So I would have stuck around and gone for some other targets, but unfortunately that guy in the suit, he just didn't have the amazing sense of humor you'd expect from a comedy mustache like that. Now, there's a lot of good and legal reasons why I'd want to drop stuff from Jones, from firefighting to crop spraying to the movie industry. And to put things in perspective, yeah, I could have done damage dropping things on people from Jones, but with that explosives, I could do a lot more damage with something heavier, like a truck or even a car. So what's the advantage with the drone? Well, I could do the whole thing undetected. I don't have to expose myself or put myself in any danger. So, should we just ban all these dangerous drones? <coughs> Given that a significant amount of our future economic growth is expected to come from driverless cars and flying robots, it might not be the smartest idea. A little bit like cutting off our arm to save our finger or banning the automobile back in 1910. So realistically, what is the solution to all of this? Well, I think it's going to be a marketplace for ideas. One thing I would say though guys, don't blame the technology, blame the operator. 
Hey, if you find that informative or entertaining, give me a like, give me a subscribe. As always, catch you next time.